Holy God, you call us to live out your justice and righteousness. Help us to walk in your footsteps so that we never lose our way. Enable us to live in love in the way that you have taught us so that we can act in grace even with those who we consider our enemies. In the name of Jesus we pray and the people of God say, Amen. Amen. Before I read the scripture lesson for today, <clears throat> pastor has given me permission to read a poem that I wrote that was published in my first book because um, it goes right along with today's theme. It's called, Who is Our Neighbor? The man who lives in the house next door, the woman behind you in line at the store, the child waiting for their parents to come in the door, the one who's rich and the one who's poor, the one who lives in the big city or in a small town, the one in a tattered dress or in a ball gown, the one who lives in the slums or lives uptown, the one with a smile or one wearing a frown. The one who's single, married, gay, or straight. The one who's always early or forever late. The one who lives to love or loves to hate. The one who tears down or loves to create. The one with many friends to greet. The one who is alone with no one to meet. The one who is living on the street. The one who is beaten and the one who beat. The one is an unfamiliar distant land, the one who lives in the mountains or in the desert sand, the one who's red, yellow, black, white, or tan, the one who has a Bible or the one where it's banned. So who is your neighbor that we are to love, to follow the rule given by our God above? If we were to find the peace of the dove, then our neighbors are all of the above. Today is from Luke chapter 10, verses 25 through 37. On one occasion, an expert in the law stood up to meet Jesus, to test him. Teacher, he asked, what must I do to inherit eternal life? What is written in the law, he replied. How do you read it, he answered. Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength and with all your mind and love your neighbor as yourself. You have answered correctly, Jesus replied. Do this and you will live. But he wanted to justify himself, so he asked Jesus, and who is my neighbor? In reply, Jesus said, a man was going down from Jerusalem to Jericho when he was attacked by robbers. They stripped him of his clothes, beat him, and went away, leaving him half dead. A priest happened to be going down the same road, and when he saw the man, he passed by on the other side. So too, a Levite, when he came to the place and saw him, passed by on the other side. But a Samaritan, as he traveled, came where the man was, and when he saw him, he took pity on him. He went to him and bandaged his wounds, pouring out oil and wine. Then he put the man on his own donkey, brought him to an inn and took care of him. The next day, he took out two denarii and gave them to the innkeeper. Look after him, he said, and when I return, I will reimburse you for any extra expense you may have had. Which of these three do you think was a neighbor to the man who fell into the hands of robbers? The expert in the law replied, the one who had mercy on him. Jesus told him, go and do likewise. Thanks be to God. Amen. Did you hear about the guy on the beach who found a bottle? He rubbed it and sure enough, out of a genie. I will grant you these three wishes, said the genie, but there is a catch. The man sighed. What catch? He asked. The genie replied, every time you make a wish, 
every lawyer in the world will receive double what you ask for. Well, I can live with that no problem, replied the exciting man. What is your best wish? asked the genie. Well, I have always wanted a Ferrari. Poof! A Ferrari appeared in front of the man. Wow! Every lawyer in the world has two Ferraris, say the genie. Next wish. I love a million dollars, replied the man. Poof! One million dollars appear at his feet. Now every lawyer in the world has two million dollars, say the genie. When days okay as long as I have got my million, replied the man. What is your final wish? The man thought long and hard and finally said, well, you know, I always wanted to donate a kidney. With <laughs> <laughs> the word of my mouth and the meditation of my heart, our hearts be acceptable to your Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Amen. Go and do likewise. Is not my word? Is not anybody here? But Jesus told him, told the lawyer, go and do likewise. Only Luke uses the story of the lawyer to introduce the parable of the good Samaritan, which is found only in Luke. The lawyer's training is in the Torah. He has spent much of his life asking and answering questions about the law. That's what the lawyer did. It's not the normal lawyer that we go to their office. It's a lawyer who studied the Old Testament, especially the five book of Moses. And all he did was finding a question so the people will answer what question he will ask them. But this story only found in Luke. And here's the beginning of that. Behold, a certain lawyer stood up and tested him saying, teacher, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? What shall I do to inherit the eternal life? And it is amazing to hear the lawyer asking the word inherit. Because what we have, someone give to all of us. And inherit over here is very important to the lawyer to make sure that God is the giver who gave him the eternal life. And that's why he <coughs> asks all of them, teacher, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? It may be the lawyer being through the synagogue or the temple asking questions and he was so Tired of being asking questions and he beat everyone by all the questions that he gave to them. And finally he was thinking about a young rabbi called Jesus. He might be thinking, I will test him and this is the way I'm going to ask him. Yes, sir. What shall I do to inherit eternal life? And he said it to him. What is written in the law? Because sometimes you are thinking, okay, I know everything in the Bible. I know I'm a, I'm a lawyer and I know uh, what is said in Hebrew and Jewish and all of that. I might ask anybody. 
He might be testing Jesus. He didn't know Jesus is a perfect man, is a fully human being, and also fully God. It is a lesson to all of us. Because sometimes we are full ourselves by asking questions, didn't know the people that we ask questions know exactly where he came from. For what the Lord did to Jesus is simple the way he looked at Jesus, but all Jesus found out this guy, his mind is far away from what he asks, but he's trying to help him all the way. Teacher, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? The lawyer is asking what he needs to do to impress God and thus gain the inheritance of eternal life. The lawyer asks his question not to gain understanding, but to gain advantage of Jesus. If I'm friend of a lawyer, I might tell him, lawyer, just be careful when he asks a question to Jesus. But he didn't have any advice. But he assured that his question will make sure that Jesus will never answer the question that he asks. Every time we hear people asking questions, and sometimes we answer. But sometimes people asking questions, they already know the answer, but they want to be advantage of the others by asking the question they already know. <laughs> because they know the people will ask him, so do you know what you're asking for? And this is what Jesus said. If you have answered correctly, do this and you will live. You shall love the Lord your God with all your hearts, with all your soul, with all your strength, with all your mind, and with and your neighbor as yourself. Yeah. Thank you, Lord. You memorized it. I appreciate that. But Jesus said to him, You have answered correctly. Do this and you will live. And Jesus said, Well, I appreciate you. You understand. You answer the question I asked you. Did you do it? Did you do it? Because Jesus understood that the lawyer was really smart, but no action at all. He studied everything in the Bible. By his mind, by his heart, there's no compassion inside himself towards the neighbors. In Luke, Jesus said, you shall love the Lord your God. It's kind of a different from how it stayed in the book of Deuteronomy. You shall love the Lord your God with all your hearts, with all your soul, with all your strength, and with all your mind. Deuteronomy has heart, soul, and might. In the book of Mark has heart, soul, mind, and strength. Matthew has heart, soul, and mind. But those differences doesn't matter. The point is that we must devote ourselves wholeheartedly to God. Receiving no corner of our lives to be untouched by God. Keep, 
totally to God. And hearts refer to emotion, soul refers to vitality and consciousness, strength refers to power, and drive mind refer to intelligence. This commandment call for love of God and neighbor, but also acknowledge a third love, love of self. Because your loving your neighbors really depend from who you are. You can't say I love my neighbors and you didn't do it to yourself. So what you are doing, if you agree to do it to yourself, that's what you're going to do to your neighbor. And sometimes we are looking at our neighbors, not realize you have to do it yourself first. And that's what the lawyer missing, he didn't practicing in himself. Not only practicing, but in his heart. He's more like a reading a book without reaching to the neighbors and say, neighbors, I love you, there's nothing you can do about it. Not only that, but I call to you and say it through my heart. You have answered correctly. You did it great. And you are a great lawyer. But you did not do it. I want you to go and do it likewise. Can anybody pray for the for AC to come a little bit cooler? Are you okay? Yes. All right, okay, all right. Okay. So we continue. So if you say no, we're gonna stop. All right. My brothers and sisters, who is your neighbor? In verse 29, but he desiring to justify himself, asked Jesus, who is my neighbor? On the surface, the lawyer is asking who he must love. Who he must love. However, at a deeper level, he is asking Jesus to define the boundaries so that he will know who is not required to love. If he can determine who is his neighbor, he will also know who is not his neighbor. While there is a strong emphasis in the Old Testament on Israel separating itself from surrounding people. If you go back home and read Deuteronomy 7, the same chapter that requires love of neighbors also says, the alien who resides with you shall be to you as the citizen among you, you shall love the alien as yourself. For you were aliens in the land of Egypt. I am the Lord your God. So Jesus wrote something. It was from the Old Testament. So the lawyer can understand what he say, what he asks. This broadened the definition of neighbor considerably. A fact of which the lawyer is surely aware, what he cannot imagine, however, is how far Jesus is about to stretch the definition.
Deal with me, okay? Deal with me. I'll be with you. I'll be with you, okay? Don't leave me. Just walk with me. All right. You know the story of where the Good Samaritan. And he fell among robbers who both stripped him and beat him and departed, leaving him half dead. And continuously Luke said, by chance, a certain priest was going down the way. When he saw him, he passed by on the other side in the same way a Levite also. When he came to the place and saw him pass by on the other side. That Jesus mentioned two of them very important persons. The priest and the Levi. And I don't know why Jesus didn't say more about that. But he picked the best people in this story to make us move forward to the Samaritan, the good Samaritan. And here it is. A Samaritan was moved with compassion, but a certain Samaritan, as he traveled, came where he was. When he saw him, he was moved with compassion. Was moved by compassion. In Greek, this move inside his guts. There's something strong inside himself. Not only his mind, but also inside his heart circulate inside himself thinking about this man he came to him and bound up his wound pouring on oil and wine it's impossible for a Samaritan to carry all of that but a certain Samaritan as he traveled came where he was a Samaritan village on a recently refused to receive Jesus because his face was set toward Jerusalem. And now Jesus has opportunity to get even to make the Samaritan the butt of a story that will be told and retold through the ages. But as we will see, he will do the opposite. He come to the final. When the good Samaritan saw the man on the road, he was moved with compassion. Pour cream on oil and wine. And here it is, not only that, the next day, The next day, he will come back and ask him, I pay everything to this person. And here it is, if you need more, I will come back and pay more. Are you perfect? Am I perfect? But every time in our life that Jesus walks with us, He taught us how to walk, not only how to walk, but to love your neighbors. I want you to think about that. The story of Good Samaritan. Did he stop because of the man? Yes, for sure. What made him stop when death came to ourselves, all he did is to destroy our life. And the Samaritan were there, heal him and pay all his debt and let him go. All the time in our life, that's how that is looking to all of us to destroy our life.
But thank God that we have Jesus who heal us, pay everything for us. That's why he went to the cross, died on the cross, resurrected, to prove that he paid all. Only by his mercy we inherit the kingdom of God by giving from God. If you have a neighbor, start working with them and say, hey neighbor, what can I do to help you? If the neighbor won't talk to you, be careful. Just go inside your room, pray to open up the hearts of your neighbor. Love your neighbors always. And your neighbors is unlimited. It's everybody. It's unlimited. And let us pray. Loving God, we are so thankful that we had a message today to all of us. Our neighbors is everybody. Our neighbors is the people that we love the most and the people understand God. Your neighbors is the homeless. Your neighbors, the people in the hospital. Your neighbors is everybody. Bless the message to all our hearts. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Brothers and sisters in Christ, through the sacrament of baptism, we are initiated into Christ's holy church. We are incorporated into God's mighty act of salvation and given new birth through water and the Spirit. All this is God's gift offered to us with our price. For the parents, you may respond, I do. On behalf of the whole church, I ask you, do you renounce the spiritual forces of wickedness, reject the evil powers of this world, and repent of your sin? I do. I do. do you accept the freedom and power God gives you to resist evil, injustice, and oppression in whatever forms they present themselves? I do. Yeah. do you confess Jesus Christ as your Savior? Put your whole trust in His grace and promise to serve Him as your Lord in union with the church with Christ has opened to people of all ages, nations, and race. Will you nurture this child in Christ's holy church that by your teaching and example they may be guided to accept God's grace for themselves to profess their faith openly and to lead a Christian life? And this is to the church. You may stand if you are able, please. Do you, as Christ's body, the church, reaffirm both your rejection of sin and your commitment to Christ? We do. Will you nurture one another in the Christian faith and life and include this person now before you in your care? What a beautiful 
Jubilee, Anna Nova, I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit went within you that being born through water and the Spirit, you may be a faithful disciple of Jesus Christ and the people of God say, Amen. Amen. Now, it is our joy to welcome our new sister in Christ, Jubilee Anna Nova Tadola. We only have given, but there's God. You give the gift from God, Jubilee. And no one They are going to give us a blessing both of you how to take care of God's gift in your family. Right. I invite the congregation please stand. We're gonna follow with me. And let us read together. Through baptism, you are incorporated by the Holy Spirit into God's new creation and made to share in Christ's royal priesthood. We are all one in Christ Jesus with joy and thanksgiving. We welcome you as a member of the family of Christ. Jubilee, Anna Nova Dardola, welcome to Tracy Fest United Methodist Church. The youngest and cutest member of our church. <laughs>
us go and do likewise. And may the blessing of God the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit be with you now and forever. And the people of God shall Amen. Amen. They may live in peace. Thank you for coming.